Thank you for joining me for another episode of The Billings Beat. I'm Neil Beyer, your host, local realtor, and founder of Aleffus Real Estate Group. Today I'm here at Wise Wonders Science and Discovery Museum, located at 3024 2nd Avenue North, to speak with Wise Wonders manager, Jeanette Rash. Jeanette, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Can you start by providing an introduction of Wise Wonders Science and Discovery Museum? Absolutely. So, Wise Wonders uh, was started in 2013 by Billings Junior League. We are a nonprofit, 501c3. Uh, the Junior League actually had us as a mobile museum, a museum without walls, and you could find us at their marketplace event in November that they had. They sort of set up a children's area over there. You'd see the little owl sign. I know a lot of kids in town call us the owl. Um, and you would go shop, do your Christmas shopping, and then go play in the kids' area. Um, and in 2015, they found a location about a block from here, two blocks from here, um, and became the museum with walls and were open year-round for kids. Uh, they were started mostly by donations and a very dedicated board of people who came and made sure that the business was going and running and functioning. Uh, they were directed by Kelly Tuhill until 2019 when she had the opportunity with her husband to uh, move to Canada and so they went and took a job there at which point Pete Bolenbaugh took over uh, our newly ex-director uh, and in, that's in 2019 when Pete came on is also the year that we moved to our current building which is the old Good Earth Market building the original Archie Cochran Ford building uh, and we gained, I think we went from like 2,500 square feet to about 9,000 square feet with about 6,000 square feet of that being the main museum floor. And we get to share this space with Eben Coffee, Coffee Collective. So we all get our caffeine fix for the day. We opened up in 2019 here uh, in I think November. Um, I joined the crew in at the end of February 2020 and a few weeks later COVID hit. We shut down for the year and we just reopened at the end of March this year to members and on the 28th of this month we opened up to the public. But during that time, I mean during the time when you were closed to the public, you guys didn't stop working. In fact, I think you guys were very successful considering the obstacles right. and challenges that you faced. We are very lucky that Pete was here during the crisis because he was able to do a level of fundraising that allowed us to keep ourselves employed and the museum going and not just exist in the space, but to make the space better. It has always been the goal of Wise Wonders to create a science-focused museum. Um, but as they started, you know, as a, as a donation-based children's museum, it was sort of whatever they could get and, and, and get donated in. And so it was pretty eclectic and random. Um, so we took this time to really refocus the museum. And um, it has also always been our goal to uh, be able to give science and learning education in a fun, playful way for people of all ages. And until we closed, we were mostly focused on like toddler to age about okay. seven or eight. And so this gave us the opportunity to also expand on that. And we retooled the museum floor. All of our exhibits are science focused now. We are in the middle of um, uh, getting some grant money in so that we can create this upstairs space into a maker space so that we can reach teens and adults oh, cool. and hold some um, more like tech focused classes as awesome. well. What is the mission and vision of the museum? So the mission of the museum is to uh, have creative, curious and scientific minds come in and learn through play for all ages and all families. And our vision is uh, to engage lifelong learning. And uh, we, have, we have done that with our littles for a very long time. Um, and we are hoping now that we can keep them past them being little and have them continue to come and learn and grow with us. There are several different membership options. Can yes. you explain those in some detail? Absolutely. So um, we have everything from uh, family memberships to organizational memberships. Uh, family memberships are $75 uh, right now. They include an annual pass to the museum. So 
from the day that you purchase your membership until you know the day before the next year you get in for free after you purchase your membership for ten dollars you can add that includes two adults and then any children that are in the household um, you can add for ten dollars a grandparent or an aunt or if you have somebody outside of the household that you think will regularly bring the kiddos in it's a, it's an additional ten dollars for the whole year um, which is we, a fantastic deal it really is a very good deal um, normal admission is five dollars per person regardless of age um, ages two and up so if you're if you have a baby we we, we won't charge you the goals I mean that's affordable I mean that yes. makes it accessible to absolutely the majority of the population and, in Billington and that is the goal time. absolutely you know not not every museum can do that but that is one of our primary purposes we want to engage lifelong learning and we can't do that if we are only serving uh, you know, folks who can afford a more expensive museum visit. So we do try to keep our prices reasonable so that everyone can get in. Um, we also have, on the reasonable side, um, for families who do need that extra financial support, who maybe are on EBT or have some housing assistance or that sort of thing, we offer a scholarship membership mm -hmm. for $10 wow. for the entire year. So we try to make it as affordable as possible we just want you bringing your kids in um, and coming in and playing and learning with them. Um, and then we also have a grandparent membership. So if, if grandma is the one that's just planning on bringing everybody in all the time, they're $75, they run the same way that the family memberships do. Um, and then we have our organizational memberships, which are $150. And so, for example, Big Sky Imaginarium, which is just down the street from us, they have an organizational membership so they can sign up and bring their groups of kiddos over uh, one fee, 150 bucks for the year, and wow. they can bring their preschool in when they're wow. ready. So yeah. That's great. And in addition to coming in and visiting the museum, there's additional programs as well, right? Yes. What other programs do you offer? So um, we this last fall, we were offering some homeschooling programs. At the moment, that is paused, but we do intend to bring those back. Um, those were sort of more in-depth, engaging, um, science-focused classes that kids could take. Uh, we had, you know, chemistry one month and um, we made like different kinds of magnetic slime and glow in the dark slime and all that sort of stuff um, uh, and did some fun, you know, explosive sort of things and whatnot. <laughs> uh, and so we had those monthly classes where they met once a week um, and those will be coming back later this year. We do have summer camps coming up. Uh, we have five different summer camps. If you go on our website, there's a space themed week, there's an engineering themed week, um, and they, we have different age ranges for those. You can check those out online. Um, we have our weekly STEM bench, and so that's a program that we had before. That one is free. Um, you come in and we will have a STEM based pro, uh, project for the kiddos to participate in. This week, I think they were using magnets to paint with. Um, and then we also are starting up our Science Sprouts program, which is for toddlers. It's our preschool toddler age program um, where they'll get a story and they'll uh, do a, a, a science project around that. So, yeah. And then I visited the website today and I also learned about like take home lessons yes. and games that students can either, or not students, children, parents right. can either rent or purchase for home use. Exactly. So we have, um, we were very lucky in this last year, uh, one of the first COVID grants that came out from the government was an innovation grant. And we managed to get a $25,000 grant to create a kit program so that um, we can serve people in their homes if they're not quite ready to come out in public. And um, we are planning on, once this is all over, to continue that programming so that uh, you know, we will always be the place that you can turn to if you want um, you know, a more in-depth science lesson or you just want something fun to do with your kids. So we have um, kits for purchase that are uh, like project based so it comes with all, most mm. most if not all of the ingredients that you need um, to do different lessons with your kids and the how to and we try to make them somewhat open-ended so that we give you like here's how you start with this material now go hopefully explore it further and see what else you can do with it um, the other things that we create are um, uh, rentable kits so 
we have some items like Makey Makeys or Raspberry Pis, uh, which are different, you know, computer or circuitry kits that you might not normally have access to and can be fairly expensive to get into. And when you don't know if your kid is gonna be really engaged right. in that right. yet and you just wanna give it a go and see what it is and how right. it works, you can rent those from us and engage and see if that's something that you maybe want to invest in in the longer term. Or if you can't afford to invest in it, you can rent it for us for a couple weeks at a time, you know, because I, I, my kids definitely have like, this is so great for about a week or two and then they move on. Yeah. So um, I imagine lots of other people's kids are like that too. Um, so yeah, we have those options. And then we also have some games that are science and math based games that you wouldn't necessarily purchase for home or can be very expensive. So like the Touring Tumble kit, um, it, is a, it is a game and a computer all at the same time, but made out of manual parts. So I'm intrigued, I wanna yes, rent it. Yes, it's very interesting. Um, so you basically build these machines and it, is, it, 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 it shows you how computers function wow. essentially. Um, but those are $80, right. it's an $80 it's investment. investment to do that. And so we have those sorts of things available for rental so that you can, you know, have fun, maybe do some learning on the sly and have that, have that opportunity. And also teacher kits, I think as well, right? Yes, we do. So we do have teacher kits. In fact, this summer, um, we are gonna be having some teacher classes so that teachers can come into the museum and learn how to use our kits. What a great resource. Yes, um, we, and we are working with OPI so that teachers can get credit licensing time for the oh, time great. that they spend in the museum learning um, how to use our kits. And so we, are, we haven't re gotten them into the museum yet, but we are working on getting um, a uh, rigamajig that can go out into classrooms and that's basically a giant erector set and it's an engineering kit and so teachers can have their kids go hands-on and build these giant contraptions um, and learn about engineering that way we also have um, a kit for rock blocks which is a very expensive um, stem set that teachers wouldn't normally be able to afford I th it's like fifteen hundred dollars for one kit for four students wow. sort of thing so um, so we're trying to gather those sorts of resources that teachers wouldn't normally be able to get and get them into classrooms and have them be able to do those experiential hands-on learning activities that they might not have access to otherwise. Rigamajig, is that like the real word? That seems that like something that you made word, up. That is the real word, rigamajig. <laughs> <laughs> I like it though, yeah. so it rolls off the tongue. You mentioned some of the things already, I think, but is there anything in addition, anything new coming out that you want the community to know about? Um, so we have definitely retooled our museum floor. Uh, if you've been in in the past, we had a grocery store, it was pretty eclectic in the items that were available on the floor. We definitely retained a few of our older exhibits. Uh, we still have our amazing water table. Uh, you know, we know the kids love that. Um, we still have our air wall and our Bernoulli blower. And uh, we have dubbed our giant teeth Chester. Chester is still here. Um, <laughs> but we have retooled the museum floor to have sort of thematic areas. And so there's an entire new set of like space focused items. We have a new baby grand piano and are in the middle of planning a sound garden exhibit um, down for the space. We, two days ago, got a life-size operation game. Uh, it is tons of fun. It buzzes and lights up just like the, the regular game does. You can go in and, and find the parts. We, in fact, have uh, changed the city to a medical center. Uh, it has been very generously donated by St. Vincent Foundation and St. Vincent Children's Clinic. Um, we've been working with them to build that space and make sure that it reflects, you know, them and what they what they see as important is, you know, getting children to feel safe and that, you know, that the doctor is not a scary place to go and that you can enjoy going to the doctor's office and that maybe even someday you'll want to become a doctor yourself. And so we've built that space kind of around those concepts with a, a little bit of a, a math bend to it. So we have some uh, fun challenges in there and measuring and weighing stations and that sort of stuff as well. 
Um, so, but we have that life size operation table that came in two days ago. Kids are already. I'm going to go down there after I know, this. And right? play with it. I was like, I want to <laughs> play life size operation. Um, so we've got that. That's brand new. Um, we will also be getting a rigamajig for the museum floor. So not only will it be going out into classrooms, but we'll have a second one for the museum floor so kids can build here. And with any luck, fingers crossed, we've been trying to get it in for two years, uh, a robot arm. <laughs> it's supposed to be coming from North Dakota. We'll see if it arrives. <laughs> so a robot arm, like... I mean, you have controls. Yeah, you, you have control controls. The arm so it's, then... a, it's an arm in a case, and you have controls to make it do different oh, how things. fun. Yeah, it'll be really great. And I think it's important to mention that we haven't yet, I think most of the community probably knows, but you guys are open again. We are. We are open, and we are accepting birthday parties. Um, right now, all birthday parties are private rentals. We used, uh, before COVID, we um, had it so that you could do a birthday party while we were open, but because we're trying to keep everyone safe, uh, we have private rentals on uh, Saturday evenings from 3 to 5 and Sundays from 12 to 2 and 3 to 5. And then um, right now we are open Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday we have slots from uh, 10 a.m. to noon and then 2 p.m. to 4. And on Saturday we have a 10 to noon and then a, a noon to 2 spot. Um, available. We are working on updating our website so that we can maybe push those back to one hour slots and get more opportunities for people to come in. Um, we'll see. We're working on that. The website is being updated as we speak. So, <laughs> Since you brought it up, what is the website address? The website address is www.wisewonders.org. Perfect. And that has, you know, if they it want to know about everything. programs, about birthday parties. Yes. What has surprised you the most about your time here at Wise Wonders? Oh, you know, I think how excited, you know, you come into work every day and of course the kids are so excited to be able to come in and whatnot and being closed for as long as we were, I think at least twice a week this whole year I've gotten emails, are you open, are you open, when are you going to be open? And um, I saw, I think it was yesterday or the day before, we had um, posted, oh, it was because we were opening for, to the general public. We had opened to members, as I said, and we opened to the general public and we did a post on Facebook and someone's response was, what? With a bunch <laughs> of exclamation points. And um, I was like, oh yeah, no, like I'm here every day. And so, you know, it sort of becomes wrote. It is just where I am and what we're doing and we're working hard, but you forget how passionate people are about this place and how excited they are to be here. And I'm, it's my goal to bring back people who maybe had their kids outgrow the museum and get them back mm -hmm. in. We've created some spaces for older kids. We have um, a huge Lego wall and we have a toddler size Lego table and we have an adult size Lego table so everyone can come in and build. There's an earthquake table so that you can build things and then go try to destroy them. <laughs> I mean, we're trying to engage multiple ages. I think our floor um, hits to probably about 12, 13 now. Um, and as we get our makerspace done this fall, we will be able to serve kids older than that and adults and maybe have some fun adult date night classes and things like that as well. Oh, how fun. Um, so, I'm, I'm always surprised at how passionate people are when they know who we are. And I, it's my goal to get more people to know who we are and for people who have maybe stopped coming to come back because we can still serve them now, so. What goals does Wise Wonders have for the coming year? It's just that, it is, it is to get people back in the door, let people know that we are open again and let them know that everyone can come play here. It's not, it's not just for the littles anymore. We want our littles. We don't want our littles to go anywhere. We want them in. Um, but we want them to bring their big brothers and big sisters and their aunts and all. We want everybody to come in and come play with us and come learn. I played before, so you know, I, <laughs> right? I imagine now it's gonna be even better. <laughs> it will be. In fact, our, we have a like rolling ball wall um, that was this tiny little mobile thing before and we've turned it into an entire like 
eight foot wall now and we put a little um, step stool next to it and it's awesome to watch these tiny little toddlers trying to keep up with their big brothers and sisters, <laughs> trying to roll things down and create these things with magnets. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to come back with my son. I mean, when we came before, he was, he's three now. He just turned three. So oh, he's, yeah. So he's going to have gonna so much fun. He's going to love it. <laughs> Jeanette, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for introducing us and, and telling us more about the museum, about what is to come in the future, about the programs, about the, the scholarships. There's so much going on here and it's such a fun place for kids to come, play, learn and grow and develop. And also adults, you know. Yes. I think, you know, I was, as someone who has been in education previously, I, I'm a strong believer in to teach is to learn, you know. And when you engage with your kids here and participate in these different things, you are also learning as well about yourself and about science. I mean, jigamajig? Rigamajig. Rigamajig. <laughs> I learned that today. Right. And then also you have a new wall that shows the sound yes. symbols so of... Yes, we of created a huge mural. It was a team effort. Um, it is the visual representation of the different aspects of sound science. So sonic booms and what pitch looks like and what, what decibels look like and um, how a, the Doppler effect works. And it's not totally finished being developed yet. Um, but we are working on creating some signage, explaining those things, and having an interactive sound system with it so that you can hear what those things are and how they function. Sounds happen around us every day and we take for granted what that is and, and how it works. And there are many aspects to how sound works and how scientists use sound to discover other things. Um, and so, this is all new to me, so it's something that I learned today. And like, <laughs> right. my, my point is, you know, even as adults, you come in here, you learn, you engage. So it's for all ages, I it think. It is, absolutely. Yeah. And with that, Billings, thank you so much for joining us for another edition of the Billings Beat. My name is Neil, I love this real estate group. Until next time, cheers.